I know more. Here's what happens to people. They get into their depression funk. This happens to me sometimes, and I've now created the ability to snap out of it. Used to, I, I had no buffer for this and no ability to get out of it. It was quicksand, and I was going to sink, and furthermore, I was going to let myself because I wanted to. That is the key to it right there. Do you want to snap out of the depression? First of all, get off the trash foods that take you there in the first place. Second of all, if you're doing that and you still cannot rise above, start to assess your situation. You know, do you do the same environment? Do you, you start to get depressed, so then you, I don't know, you drink, which is a depressant to the system and makes it worse. Or do you start to get depressed and then you start to wallow in your own self-pity? I used to do that. I love to do it. I love to feel sorry for myself. And guess what it got me? Nowhere. Guess who it hurt? Only me. It didn't hurt those that I felt like put me in that victim situation. Um, you know, let go of what others think and what others think you are and quit riding the wave of your own success by what they think. It's really irrelevant, you know? Um, just like when you start to get depressed, do you go to your same bedroom spot and sit in the corner? I used to do some wacky things. I would sit in the closet and shut the door. Nobody would know I was in there and I would listen. Just so that I could even feel worse if somebody said, you know, mom's going crazy or, you know, your mom's crazy or whatever. I felt crazy. And I allowed myself to stay there until I decided it was either I was going to make a change or I was going to waste away. And I, I still had a glimmer that I was a little bit more than that, you know? Um, change the words you say to yourself. You have to consciously snap yourself out of the depression funk that you're in. You know, you have to, when you start to... Earlier, I was going to put a throwback Thursday, and I was going to get a picture of my kids. I don't go to those picture albums often anymore because I am still developing the strength to only feel good about that situation. I still have to train my brain to do that. And as I'm flipping through there... I felt that feeling come over me, like feeling of failure, feeling of was I good enough? But you know what? I've taken that to judgment in my brain. Was I good enough? I did my best dang job every day that I could. And that's what counts. And that's what I do. That's what I do now. Every day I try to do my best job no matter what I'm doing, no matter what moment I'm in in my life, because those moments are going to be gone. Um, just like your kids are going to grow up and just like you never know what your life situation may throw you. you you really can't you can't control others and frankly you can't control the situation like I said earlier you can only control your reaction to the situation so instead of letting that feeling come over me and dwelling in that I said no I don't think so and I got up I did a few errands, and I was going to take y'all to this place to see, um, which I'll tell you in a second. Let me see if there's anything else I've jotted down. I wanted to tell you about this. You know, depression is like, like being the gray people. It's the sea of gray. The only way you can snap out of it is if you yourself allow the colors of this world and the colors of the moment to come upon you. The gray matter of depression is only all your past and future fears coming together dwelling on you. What snaps you out of it is the colors of the present moment. It's just a theory, but I thought I'd share that since it was helping me today. But I was going to take you out to Shelby, North Carolina, which is right up the road. I live kind of near the state line. And I was going to show you this place called Hallelujah Acres, which I have learned so many things over the years. I, I came across a lot of health books there. It's where I discovered my sprouter and, and juicer and all these different things. And there were some classes I took and women's retreats. And 
What was so cool is I was going to show you how they had started to build this whole community across the road from this Hallelujah Acres. It's like a healing retreat. And it also, um, I'm in my neighborhood. Let me take you off here. You shake it. So it, it's also like they, they have um, a healing facility for cancer and, all, and they have a restaurant and all the foods that they have there are organically grown and they, they grow them themselves and it's an awesome place. People that work there are vibrant and, and loving and it, you feel the love pour on you when you go in there. Well, across the road they were developing this Hallelujah Acres community and you could build in there. There were different plans and it was going to be a, a house. It was different models of homes and um, some more more like small family and then large family at the back and it was a let around the lake and it, had, it was going to have all this gardening and all these activities and people were starting to build in there and I remember um, when they first started doing that I thought that would be what would that be like to be around like-minded people living in your community and how awesome that would be well this is really tragic it's not really shocking but um, I went up there and I got out, I turned the camera on, I was talking to you and I went up to the door and there were still all the gardens and everything but it said um, such and such academy. It had turned into a school and friends it had closed down and they do still have their website and I'm sure, I know they have retreat centers other places but this was the corporate headquarters and Shelby, North Carolina is a kind of um, not that big town and um, there's going to be a lot of barbecue served there. Let me just put it that way. And, and uh, fried tomatoes and, and pork rinds. And so the little community across from it, there was still a couple of houses that had been built. But there was nothing else and the sign was gone. And I thought, what a testimony to the fact of how important our community is, how important it is that we can reach each other far and wide through the internet, through YouTube. What a blessing when the internet is so nasty and so bad on so many levels. If you look for the good in things, you can find them. And and y'all, it's just making a world of difference to people that we would never be able to reach and would never be on our lifestyle, you know, and aren't near us in our community. So I just thought I would share that. And um, it was it was saddened my heart to see that because I was going to be so excited. Uh, and I almost put on my shirt I got from there that says, got carrots, and it's got a question mark like, you know, got milk. <laughs> but, um... It's just important that we realize what an awesome experience it is for us to have each other in this, you know, for us to be able to chat and us to be able to come together as a community and support each other and love each other where we are on our journey. You know, I was thinking when I did that interview and um, Paul Kelly was saying he was glad that I had said, um, you know, that I can still support people that, that eat a little bit of the cooked carbs. Of course you can because everybody's on their own journey and it's just like if I was to be a master swimmer and I said, well, you can't get in the ocean, you can't get in the water at all until you're a master swimmer. Guess what? Those friends would never learn to swim because they would never even get their toes in the water. You know, we need to love people where they are, love and embrace them where they are to bring them to you, you know? See y'all later.